So a long time ago, I read this book and it was actually really fascinating. It was about seduction and human attraction. And it labelled like seductive characters. So the premise was rather interesting. It was that everyone has something inherent within them which attracts other people. And the idea of being a seducer or a seductress or just the idea of attracting people in life is to find that quality within yourself, a quality that naturally draws people to you and then accentuate it. So when I read this, it talked about different characters, like different seductive characters, and in particular, like figures of fantasy. So, like for example, in females, like the female figure of fantasy for a man is something called the siren. And I think the idea comes from like the legend of sirens. Like the beautiful women at sea who would sing and draw sailors on their ships to them, only for the sailors to drown. So the sailors would be hypnotised by their song, and when they'd find the sirens on their ships, they'd be hypnotised by their beauty. But then ultimately they would perish. But the legend is fascinating from that angle because it's kind of that danger. You know, it's like beauty and hypnotism and the quality of being alluring and you know that dangerous side as well so then like the seductive character of a female like the the fantasy character of a female for a man is is a woman who is almost like unattainable like a fantasy figure it's a woman who's a fantasy figure and she's desired by many usually but she's not easy to obtain and in some some like cases and situations she's just totally unattainable but a man may in inverted commas possess her <laughs> for a short while but he can never truly have her she will never truly be his and so there's that kind of unattainable nature and like that brush with danger. I think it goes back to like the legend of the siren is that the sailors, when they hear the siren song, they go towards it, they go towards her, but they can never have her, they can never attain her, they just head towards their death. <laughs> and there is a reason I'm talking about this, I promise. <laughs> you have to forgive me because this is just how I speak sometimes when I'm trying to say how I feel, I just, I tend to give like, the thought process behind it, behind how I'm feeling, and yeah, I'll type that. So, the male figure of fantasy is something, or rather someone, called the rake. And again, I found this fascinating because the rake, is short for rake hell. So literally someone who rakes the coals of hell. And this figure of female fantasy is a man who, by all accounts, apparently, historically speaking, is usually dishonest, disloyal, and amoral. And when I read this, I was like, that sounds stupid. Like, why, would, why would women be attracted to that? It doesn't make any sense. But the attractive quality of the rake is his fervent desire. So, for example, it's a man who desires a woman so much, with so much intensity, that he is beside himself with burning passion. And for that moment that he desires a woman, brief as it may be, he will go to the ends of the earth and back for her 
And apparently that kind of desire has a highly intoxicating effect on a woman. I found this really interesting because me not being a woman, I didn't understand how a woman would find that attractive. So as a man, I could understand how a siren would be attractive. So like Marilyn Monroe, for example, was a siren. Because she was like intensely desirable. And I think every man, or almost every man whom she encountered would would want her. But apparently she was always unattainable. Apparently a man could never truly have her heart. Like she would flirt with them and they may have been lovers for a little while but apparently in her wake she left a lot of broken hearts because she would have these situations with men and then they'd always want her afterwards like they'd want her for life but then she'd always move on and so there's the unattainable nature and that like temporary nature of it but I think that makes it more attractive I could understand that the female figure of fantasy for men as a man, I couldn't understand how the rape would be attractive. So if if a man who is a rake, if he's like dishonest and disloyal, even if he desires a woman, why would that be attractive? So when I read it, I thought, uh, bullshit. <laughs> but then I started seeing it. I actually started seeing it. I started like seeing situations with people I knew and people in my periphery and it was it was actually kind of true like the women I knew when they'd meet a man who was clearly no good for them maybe he was a player maybe he was a bit of a bad boy maybe the situation was not conducive to them being together like maybe he was taken but in all of those situations whenever the man had an intense desire in the woman usually she wouldn't be able to help herself. Like she would desire him back. I find this really interesting. Because then it begged the question, like, well, what if a man just desires a woman a lot? Like, is that enough for her to, like, fall over herself with desire in return? Turns out it's not. Because you must have seen, like, there are loads of men out there who desire women who do not desire them back. And... The missing ingredient in these situations is individual attention. Individualized attention seems to be... seems to be that kind of really, really attractive thing. And it's not just attractive for women, it's attractive for anyone. Because at the end of the day, as humans, we all just want to be understood, right? All of us, that's all we really want. We just want someone to understand us, to understand our characters, our personalities, to understand who we are at our core, and in some ways to understand us in ways that we do not understand ourselves, and to allow us to discover ourselves, but I truly believe that we all just want someone to get us, you know what I mean? (sighs) So this is like, the essence of the rake, the male figure of female fantasy. He may be a bad boy or he may be, he may have something dangerous about him, but it's his fervent, burning desire for the woman or the person he desires at the time, but his like burning desire for her as an individual, for her character is like, He desires her for her, not her because she's a woman or because of what he wants from her. Not just because he wants to fuck her or, you know, sorry to say it's a raw, but not just because he wants to have sex with her, but because he's drawn to her with such vigour because of her character, because of who she is. And I think this is what you bring out in me. It's really interesting because I haven't experienced it before. I'm not saying you make me disloyal or dishonest. (laughs) It's not like that at all because, as you know, I'm not like that. I'm the type of person I require a connection 
to become close to someone or to be physical with someone and and I don't like being dishonest with the person I'm with I really want them to know who I am like exactly who I am and I just want you to just know exactly who I am and I just want to be totally honest with you but you bring out this side of me like you bring out this incredible desire which I've never experienced before it's only you that does it to me honestly it's just there's no one else there's just no one else as you know I'm not lacking in experience in the relationship department I've had my fair share, but you're the only one I felt this way. You're the only one I've felt this much intensity with. I, when I'm not with you, I want you so much. And I miss you so much. I can't even tell you how much. I can't even take it. I keep looking at my phone. To see if you've messaged. I feel like a slave to my desire. I feel like a slave to you. It's like you're my drug. Literally, it's like you're my drug and I have an addiction. It's like I'm a junkie, but only for you and only for you. <sighs> Seriously, no one else. And when I'm with you, it's still as intense. Like sometimes you really miss someone. And when you see them, you're like, oh, you know, it's nice to see you. Then after you've seen them, you're like, oh, you know, it's, I'm okay now. With you, it's not like that. With you, I miss you so badly. And then when I see you, I am elated. I am so happy, I cannot even express to you. And when I see you, I just always want to be close to you. Like, I can't wait to touch you when I see you. Sometimes I see you, and I just want to rip your clothes off. Literally, I just want to rip them off. <sighs> I just want to rip them off and throw you down and have my wicked way with you. I mean, can you blame me? <laughs> it's just a side of me you bring out. So you bring out the rake in me. You bring out that intense, fervent, arduous desire. And I really can't help feeling it. And I've never felt it before. I've never felt it in this intensity. So much so that I don't know what to do with it. It kind of scares me. <sighs> because of this much desire. Because I want you so much for you. and Exactly who you are and what you are. And no one else even comes close. Anywhere near close. It scares me because I feel like I'm at your mercy. I feel vulnerable. I feel like if you suddenly turned around and said, I don't want to see you anymore, I'm like, I'd be, I don't know, I'd just be like, what the fuck do I do now? <laughs> but anyway, I don't want to think about that. That's what you do to me. Even right now, <sighs> you're sitting opposite me and I'm telling you this and all I want to do is just, uh, just pull you close to me and just have you all to myself. Uh, I just want to rip your clothes off and do whatever I want to you for however long I want. Uh, and all of that makes me just miss you even more when I don't see you. So tomorrow morning when I've got to leave, I know that for the day I'm just going to miss you so much and it's going to stay like that until I see you again. So give in to me. Allow me to explore my desire. Allow me to explore you. Come over here. I'm going to have my way with you. Let me show you how much I want you. Oh. Mm -hmm.